Do you remember those days in high school when you had to deal with permutations and combinations? I think everyone had a kind of love-hate relationship with those problems, right? Well, today I want to talk about a related problem on lead code, permutations. You are given an array of unique elements and you have to find out all the possible permutations. Well, my first piece of advice is that whenever you see problems around permutations and combinations, it is very very important that you understand the logic behind it. Writing code should not be your first priority. So today we are gonna do exactly that. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. A place where we explore the life of technology and make programming fun and easy to learn. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we are gonna see a pattern of such problems and how do you actually approach them. Going forward, we will try to solve this problem and then also do a dry run of the code so that you understand how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. So you are given an array of distinct integers and you have to return all the possible permutations. Permutations simply mean all the different ways you can arrange the elements, right? So given our first test case, I have the elements 1, 2 and 3. Notice that they all are different, right? And turns out that the number of ways you can arrange these elements are 6. If you look closely, no two arrangements are same, right? So for this particular test case, all of these arrangements should be your answer. Notice that you cannot have an arrangement where you are taking an element more than one time. For example, you cannot have an arrangement like 3, 3 and 1. Or you cannot even have 3, 3, 1 and then 2. Both of these cases are invalid because you cannot duplicate an element and you cannot exceed the total length of the original array, right? Similarly, you have another test case that only has two elements. Right? So you can arrange these elements in two different ways and these are those two ways. So for test case number two, these should be your answer. Now if you have understood the problem statement correctly and want to give it a shot again, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and see how you should begin tackling these kind of problems. Okay, so I have this sample array in front of me. And we have to generate all the permutations, correct? First of all, what I'm going to do is, instead of looking at integers, I'm just going to convert this array to characters. I believe that understanding concept with characters is relatively easy. It will be exactly the same, right? So now I have three characters with me and I have to generate all the possible permutations, right? Whenever you see such kind of problems, first of all, try to determine what is the total number of combinations that you're looking at? So in this scenario, you have three places to fill up, right? And you are given a case that you cannot repeat any character. So you can say that, okay, the first place can have a choice of three characters. And then since one of the characters is taken up, the second place can have a choice of two characters. And then the third place can only have a choice of one character, right? So this gives you a total of 6. That means you can have a total of 6 possible permutations, right? And if you quickly look back at our sample test case, you can see that we have a total of 6 possible arrangements, correct? So that means we are going in the right direction. Now, how do you go about generating these 6 possible scenarios? Let us look at the most logical way. So you have to fill up 3 places, right? And the string we have is a, b, c, correct? So one way you can approach this problem is, okay, I can choose a or I can choose b or I can choose c. So this will generate three possible scenarios where a is the first character, b is the first character and c is the first character, right? Now in each of these scenarios, I have two more places to fill up, right? So for each of this scenario, you will have a choice of two more characters, correct? Either you choose a B or a C. A or a C 
a or a b and that will give you new permutation now if you look closely in each of these combinations i am just left with a single character right and as soon as i fill these single characters c b c a b and then a again so what do you see over here you see that i generated all of my permutation and this is your answer right so this is the maths behind it and the logic behind it but if you try to look closely what are we exactly doing in this approach we start off with an empty string right and then we choose the first character a as soon as we choose a first character we get all of these scenarios correct then what are you going to do you will go back and then try choosing a different character right so you choose b as the first character and get all of these scenarios then you will go back again and try choosing c as your first character and this will give you all of these new scenarios so what does this tell you this means that you are backtracking correct and i would just like to tell you that whenever you see problems talking about find out all the possible all of them that means you have to go back again and look at all the possible choices that you have this always means backtracking well if you're new to backtracking and want to learn more check out the link in the description below and you will find a video on it so now that you know you have to apply the backtracking technique how do you go about doing that this time let me start off with a generic example i have four different characters b o a t and we will try to find all the permutations using the backtrack technique so when using backtracking you will start off with an empty string right and then let's say i am picking the first letter as b so when i pick the first letter i will get b in my string and for the second character i can either choose o a or t right now what does the backtracking technique tell you for backtracking what you're going to do is you are going to backtrack and then you will remove the letter that you already chose and then you will try to use a different letter so let's say i am choosing the letter o this time for a moment forget about what will happen over here when i choose the letter o what will happen is i will get o in my string and for the set of next characters i can either choose b a or t right backtracking is not over yet what are you going to do you will go back again remove the character that you chose and then try choosing the next character right so this time let us say i am choosing the character a so when i choose a i will get a in my string and for the set of next characters i can either choose b o or t so this will go on until you reach the end of the string right i am leaving out this last part as an exercise for you you can try to do it on your own and understand what is going to eventually happen when you choose the character t so you can see that all of these scenarios will again further backtrack and then generate all of the cases right we are not going to go into every case so let us just try to expand upon one of the cases that is when we are choosing b as the first character right so now you know that you chose the character b what can you do next you have a total of 3 characters to choose from so we are going to apply the same approach over here what we are going to do is okay let me try to pick up the letter o this time as soon as i pick the letter o i get b o in my string and for the third character either i can choose a or i can choose t then we will backtrack we will remove the letter that we just chose and we will try to pick a new letter right so after backtracking we are picking the letter a that changes my string to b a and for the third character either i can choose o or i can choose t right once again what will you do you will backtrack remove the letter that you just chose and try choosing the third letter that is available right when i choose the third letter i will again get a similar scenario so now you should be able to see that how this is a recursive property right at every instant we are doing the same kind of procedure correct 
so once again we will apply back tracking over here right i have the choice of either choosing a or t as my third character right so let us say i chose a as my third character that will change my string to b o a and i can only choose t as my last character right what i do now i backtrack i remove a and i will try to choose the next character that is available and that is t so when i choose t my string becomes b o t and i can only choose a as my last character right so now you see that i have reached all of my four characters right and that means i can stop over here i got one of the permutations as b o a t and the second permutation as b o t a correct to find more permutations what will happen is backtrack will occur on this part of the string and then backtrack will occur on this part of the string going further ahead you will apply backtracking on this part and then backtracking on this part and eventually you will apply backtracking using the last element as well right so in a way we are applying several steps to arrive at a solution we start from the beginning and iterate over each of the character up till the end right and for each character what we do is we pick the character and then we go back and try picking a different character once again we will remove this character and then try picking a different character once again we backtrack remove the character and try picking a different character right now that you know these basic steps to produce all the combinations writing the code for this is very very simple let's see how you can do that now that you have understood the concept let us take back our original example of an integer based array correct now this array is passed in as a input parameter to the function permute right and what we're going to do is we will try to generate all the permutations using this backtrack helper method oh and by the way this complete code and the test cases are also available in my github profile you can find the link in the description below starting with the dry run of the code what is the first step that we do first of all we create a result list that will contain all of my permutations so this list will have all of the permutations that i find in the next step what i will do is i will call my backtrack helper method with this result list and we will keep on adding all the permutations to it then we pass in a empty list you have to begin somewhere right so you begin with an empty list and then we pass in our array that will help to backtrack right once this backtracking method is complete you will get your result list and you can simply return it now how does this backtrack method look like try to remember the steps that we were taking what we were doing we started off with the first element and went all the way up to the end correct so i will start a for loop that will iterate through every element in my array right and what do we do in this for loop first of all what did we do we added a number right and then we will go back so what will happen is we will add a number to this list and then you go back the next step is you remove the number you just added and then you will go back in this loop again and try to add the next number so this will generate your series as this in each of the backtracking method what will happen is you will again apply the backtracking technique on these new arrays correct and what will happen is for each of these iterations you will start generating all the possible permutations correct but there is an important thing to note over here do you remember that you cannot use a single element twice correct so we will add a condition in our for loop that if we get the same number as we have already chosen then you just need to skip it so we just add a if condition if our list already contains that number just continue so you know that in your subsequent steps you are not considering the same number again so now we took care of everything but there is just one condition remaining we do not know when to stop when do we stop we have to stop as soon as our length will reach the actual size of the array correct so we add in one more condition that is if we match the length 
of our original array to our temporary list, then you simply need to return. And this is the base case of your recursion. To calculate the time complexity, you know that an array of length n will have a total of n factorial permutations, right? And to calculate those combinations, you need to traverse the array n times, right? So your total time complexity would be order of n factorial multiplied by n. And your space complexity would be order of n, where n is the stack space that you're choosing. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see problems with such words, every possible, all the combinations, just get a pen and paper immediately and try to find out all of these combinations. If you can figure out the logic correctly and the maths of this correctly, the problem will become very, very easy to solve. If you find such problems in an interview, talk to your interviewer. Try to find out all of those cases and get rid of all the redundant cases that you might be thinking about. This will really simplify your problem. What other problems did you see where you had to work out all of these combinations? What approach did you use? Did you face any problems with the solution I just offered you? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text explanation of this problem is also available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. You can find the link in the description below. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.